King or no king, he must be daft destroying a creature so beautiful. Not even a trial did she get. And no surgeon here to certify her death all decent and proper. Well, I ain't no surgeon, but I'll gladly stay behind to see this one. We'll both stay. Meg Payton, you have been accused of the murder of six men and of witchcraft and crimes so heinous they cannot even be spoken of or written about. The moment of your death is at hand. Do you repent? For the sake of your immortal soul, I ask you again. Do you repent? No, I do not repent. And you may tell the man who condemned me that Meg Payton does not die here. With your last words, you defy your sovereign? With my last words, I pity him. Get on with it. Good morning, Mr. Hangman. Good morning, Mum. Hold on, Boker. Only the king himself can get angry with his wig on. It's the law. Now we'll just take yours off. No, please! I don't want anyone to see me without it. Not when I'm alive. Fall into a guinea, she's bald. Let's see. Keep your filthy hands off her. Don't worry, Mum. Law or no law, you'll not be put to shame as long as I'm in charge. Thank you. was a gruesome surprise even for a hangman. A stunningly beautiful courtesan is dropped into the pit. And a moment later, her executioners discover a withered hand, claw-like, clutching a wig. Well, of course, the noose usually does have a disastrous effect upon the human body, but... Nothing like this. How strange. I should think it must have something to do with this wig. There is something weird and frightening about it. But, my friends, look! It's only cloth and hair. Lustrous, red hair, to be sure, but hardly very mysterious. At least, that's what the characters in tonight's story thought. Unfortunately for them. May I introduce Sheila DeVore, played by Patricia Barry. George Mashick, played by John Barragray. Herbert Bleak, played by John Fiedler. Arabella Foote,
played by Linda Watkins, and Max Quink, played by Herbert Rudley. We call our story A Wig for Mr. Vore. And naturally, I refer to this particular wig. Now, my friends, you know all about the magic that the sorcerers of the silver screen put on film for your entertainment. Well, tonight, as sure as my name is Boris Karloff, you'll learn that sorcery can be performed without celluloid. Behind the cameras, perhaps even in your own living room. aristocratic face as she gazes with the serenity of a Madonna at the bishop who says, Meg Payton, you have been accused of the murder of six men, and of witchcraft and crime so heinous that they cannot be spoken of nor written down. The moment of your death is at hand. Do you repent? And I just stand there, looking, looking breathtaking, unafraid. And the bishop says... Now, Herbert, never mind all that business about what the bishop says. Skip on down to that part where I turn to the hangman and I say, Good morning, Mr. Hangman. Uh, a morning, Mum. Are you ready? I'm ready. The hangman brings a noose up, but his hands are trembling badly, his face a mask of sorrow. And I'm much more worried about the way he feels than I am about myself. And I turn and I, I look up into his face and I say, Your hands are trembling. Here, let me help you. And I take his two huge hands in my own. And I guide the noose up over my head. And as I'm standing there waiting for death, the camera booms up, 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 until the cold gray fog obscures the scene. The end. Herbert. Uh, yes, Miss DeVore? Herbert, I've made up my mind. Of all the scripts that you've brought me, I like The Legend of Meg Payton the best. Oh, that's nice. I'll put it on the top of the list, and we'll start through the stack again. I mean, just to be sure we've chosen the right one for you. No, no, Herbert. Herbert, I said I've made up my mind. I'm going to make my comeback in The Legend of Meg Payton, and I'm going to be wonderful in it. <laughs> Do you know something, Herbert? I think this long rest has done just wonders for my complexion. I'm awfully glad I have the kind of face that improves with age. There's a lot to be said for mature beauty, you know. Oh, Herbert, I have the most marvy idea how to do my hair. I'm going to wear the Meg Payton wig. I mean the real, actual wig. Oh, I saw a picture of it, and it's, it's just absolutely fabulous. She was supposed to be a witch, you know. And there was this rumor that she made the wig out of her own victim's hairs. I mean, she just stood there and pulled them out of their heads, one strand by one strand. Isn't that thrilling? And then she put a spell on it. You know, Herbert, that's pretty good publicity stuff, don't you think so? 
Oh, Max just simply has to get it for me. I mean, I couldn't possibly get into character without it. Besides, all my fans would absolutely adore the idea of my wearing the genuine, actual wig. Uh, well, yes, uh, I guess so. But, but don't you think we should go through the stack just once more? I mean, don't you think maybe we're being hasty? No, sweetie. We can't keep Max waiting forever. Oh. I mean, he needs me. Uh, well, yes, Miss DeVore. Herbert, well, I know he's very hard to reach. I mean, after all, when you're head of a studio, that's a very responsible job, and he's a very busy man, but I just know that you can get in to see him. Uh, well, I, I don't know Herbert, about that. Darling, I have all the confidence in the world in you. Besides... It isn't as though he'd forgotten all about little me. <laughs> Listen. Sheila, darling, we love you. We miss you. We need you. Hurry back to us. Signed, Max. Was there ever anybody so loyal? No one. All right, sweetie. Now you just run right on down to Mr. Max Quink's office and tell them at long last we found a script. The perfect script for me. Miss Sheila DeVore is ready to resume her career. Starting immediately. <laughs> How'd you find her? Where is she? Find her? I never left her. Mr. Quink, I want you to keep your promise to Miss DeVore. My promise? What promise? The one I've been making for you for the past five years. You've been making? Well, you see, Mr. Quink, every week you send Miss DeVore a basket of roses. Red roses. I do. And you enclose a card. The last card said, Sheila, darling, we love you. We miss you. We need you. Hurry back to us. Sign, Max. Touching sentiment. <laughs> now, Miss DeVore knows nothing of my little deception, and she need never know. But when she returns to work next week... Turns to work? Everything should be the same as the day she left. She should have her own bungalow, uh, her favorite cameraman. <laughs> that would please her. And perhaps her old director. Magic? George Machik. <laughs> Machik wouldn't touch the kind of stuff Sheila used to do. He only does highbrow stuff now. Oh, the legend of Meg Payton is a highbrow picture. Miss DeVore says she'll be wonderful in it. As what, the charwoman? I told you, as Meg Payton. It's the vehicle Miss DeVore has chosen for her comeback. Comeback? Are you out of your mind? Well, I won't tell her you said that. I look bleak. I'm an easygoing man. I tolerate oddballs. They amuse me, but not when they keep harping on the same bad joke. Sheila DeVore is a 38-year-old has-been. She was finished at 32. My heart bleeds for her, but that's life. This part calls for a 25-year-old fresh redhead. Not Miss Dimple Darling of 1945. Well, then you'll just have to get Miss DeVore the best makeup man in Hollywood. Do you mean to tell me she doesn't realize what she looks like? Miss DeVore is absolutely incapable of seeing anything ugly. I mean, you of all people should remember that. All right, that's enough. Get out. Very well, Mr. Quink. You'll be hearing from Mr. Vore's attorneys. Attorneys? What attorneys? The ones that will ask you and Mr. Machik to account for the missing profits of 32 of her pictures. As I understand it, the three of you were equal partners in an independent picture production company. Who are you, Bleak? I'll tell you who I am, Mr. Quink a bookkeeper who works in your accounting department <laughs> and who's made it his business to re-audit the financial statements on every picture Miss DeVore made. <laughs> Don't try to bluff me. If you'd found anything irregular, you'd have told Sheila years ago. Oh, she trusted you. I didn't want to disillusion her. And I don't want to now. But since you're going to break her heart anyway... Well, wait a minute. Let's talk about it. Choice is very simple, Mr. Quink. Would you prefer to go to jail or, or phone Mr. Machik and tell him the news? Sit down. Now. Thank you. 
entered my old dressing room. They haven't changed a thing. Isn't it beautiful? <gasps> Herbert, it's here. The wig. Meg Payton's very own, all the way from the museum in London. Oh, Herbert, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, it's just... It's just breathtaking. Well, when I told Mr. Quink you had your heart set on it, he said, buy it for Bleak. <laughs> he hardly objected at all when I gave him the bill. Uh, well, I just have never seen anything so... so breathtaking. Oh, I just have to try it on. Good. I I'd better go and see what's keeping your makeup on. All right. Fellas, hold it a minute, will you, please? Miss DeVore is on her way to the set. She'll be here any moment. Now, you all realize that this is Miss DeVore's first picture in several years. Well, we're all very happy to have her back. We must realize how difficult it is to get back into the routine after such a long hiatus. Therefore, I ask your complete understanding and cooperation. Oh, Blake Boy is on her way to the set. How does she look? Well, I, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Didn't the makeup man? Oh, the this makeup man hadn't come when I left. Several years. I just phoned. She's on her way over here now. Well, what I mean is, she has been ill for a long time. And when a person has been ill, naturally a person is bound to change. Oh, my God. <laughs> Believe it. What's the matter, Arabella? Is my slip showing? Darling, you look positively. Well, I didn't remember you having such a flair for clothes. But of course not, darling. You were always looking for dirt. <laughs> You've changed, Sheila. In more ways than one. Everyone has noticed. Really? Mm-hmm. Everyone. And especially the hair. That must be the wig Max had brought over for the picture. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. People are beginning to wonder why you're never seen without it. Darling, don't you think you're overdoing it a bit? I mean, actually living in your makeup? That sort of nonsense went out with Theodore Barra. Herbert, please show Miss Foote out. What's this, temperament? Why, I always remember the dimple darling girl as a perfect angel. Herbert, if you don't get this female mutt out of here, I'll rip her to shreds. I have to check the mail room. Miss Foote, I'll walk you to your car. You shouldn't be nasty to me, Sheila. You might live to regret it. I'll die waiting. Sheila. Oh, hi, Georgie. Sheila. Sheila, I've just seen the rushes, and you've made a believer out of me. Oh, I confess I was skeptical yesterday, but, darling, you were sensational. Oh, that's so nice. Sheila. You know something? Uh-uh. Before your retirement, I... I thought you were the most beautiful girl in the world. <sighs> Do you know something? What? That is the nicest thing anybody ever said to me in my whole life. <laughs> and I especially appreciate it coming from you. I mean, such a fine, dedicated, sensitive artist with... With impeachable taste. Look, Sheila, why don't you um, slip into something comfortable? 
Let's take a little run up into the hills. I'd uh, like you to see my apartment. The view is magnificent. Oh, Georgie, I'd absolutely love to do that. But you see, I'm afraid I couldn't get back in time to dress for the party. Party? Oh, yes. Yes, we're supposed to be there at 8.30. Be where at 8.30? Well, at Max's. You know, I'm going to be the guest of honor. What are you talking about? Why, Georgie, don't tell me you weren't invited. Why, well, that sneaky old lech. Max? Max. Well, that is the strangest thing. I wonder why he didn't invite you. I haven't the slightest idea. Except in addition to being a dirty old man, he's greedy. Oh, Georgie, that's not nice. I mean, Max is your friend. He discovered you. Georgie. What? I know that you're trying to shield me. To protect me from some unpleasantness. Well, uh... Now, darling, don't you see? You mustn't do that. I mean, you must tell Sheila everything. After all, we're partners. I hate to disillusion you, Sheila, darling, but your old friend Max Quink stole from you when he involved me. And? I trusted him. I swear I didn't know what he was up to. Sheila, you do believe me. Why would I tell you if I were a party to it? To save your own skin. You assumed I'd find out eventually. No, no. How would you find out? You never took the slightest interest in business matters before. I intend to take a great deal of interest in a lot of things from now on. Sheila, what's happened to you? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. Darling, wait. I spoke in anger about Max. Maybe I exaggerated a little. Sheila, you're not going to the police. No, Georgie. I have a much better idea. I must see Mr. Vore. Mr. Machek said she was here. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Quink left strict orders he was not to be disturbed. But she is here. Good night. Oh, wait, this letter. It came special delivery. It's about the wig. She has to read it as soon as possible. I said good night. Like old times. Remember? Quiet evenings by the pool. Music. Just the two of us. How could I forget? Sit down, dear. But I haven't forgotten this. Pink champagne. Oh, man. Your favorite. <laughs> and now we're going to have a toast. Just like old times. Remember? Let us have wine and women. Mirth and laughter. And sermons and soda water the day after. <laughs> you haven't forgotten. something.
Max. Hmm? Do you know something? You never once answered any of my phone calls and you never came to visit me. Oh, what about the uh, roses I sent you every week? And the notes. <laughs> oh, Max. You know, if it hadn't been for those roses, I would have sworn you'd forgotten all about little me. <laughs> Not me. Uh, Max, darling, please be careful. You're mussing my hair. <laughs> Give me that wig. Ah, oh, come on, honey. Take it off. Why, Max? Take it off. You don't need it. You really want me to? Yes, I really want you to. You sure? I'm positive. Absolutely positive? Absolutely. I want to see my Sheila as she really is. Mm. All righty. leave everything to good old Georgie. But I don't want to involve you. Involve? But I'm already involved desperately. I told you I'm in love with you. This gives me a chance to prove it. Oh, I'm glad you called me. Georgie. I wonder why all these awful things always happen to me. I told you not to worry. Georgie. Do you think we ought to call the police? No. With all those scratches on his face, they'd think you had a fight. But we did. He attacked me. I told you. Max was no friend. Say, we will call the police, and that's exactly what you'll tell them. And when they get here, you'll be over here on the sheds, crying, heartbroken, hysterical. Georgie, I'm afraid that won't do. Oh, why not? Well, you see, if we did that, then the police would want to ask me all kinds of questions about, uh, well, to find out whether I might have killed Max. Well, then, if they did that, all that messy business about our company and the stolen money and all those things would come out. And you'd go to jail, too, Georgie. Oh. Yes, I see. No. There must be another way. I've got it. We'll go to Yuma tonight. What for? We'll get married. They can't force a husband and wife to testify against each other. Besides, the police will never suspect we'd do a thing like this. Not on our wedding night. Well, what about the picture? We have to finish shooting the picture. I told you, don't worry. Tomorrow's the last day of shooting. We'll be back in plenty of time. Come on. All righty. A farthing to a guinea, she's bald. Let's see. No. Keep your dirty hands off. Law or no law, you'll not be put to shame while I'm in charge, ma'am. You're very kind. You must have a daughter of your own. You must love her very much. Yes, ma'am. Your hands are trembling. Let me help you. Cut. Oh, that was fine. Was it all right? Oh, just oh, good. Fellas, hold it a minute, will you please? I want you all to know that through your understanding and cooperation, we've been able to make a picture of which we can all be very proud. From the bottom of our hearts, 
My bride and I wish to thank you. <laughs> Great. How dare they get married without telling me. Mr. Vore, hello, Mr. Vore, I have to talk to you. Well, of course, Herbert, but not now. Can't you see I'm busy? But it's about your wig. Thank you, Betty. This letter from the museum in London. I don't want to read it. But you're in danger, Mr. Vore. Something terrible is going to happen. You are absolutely right. Something terrible is going to happen if you don't take that letter and get out of here. But you don't... Get out! You don't understand... You heard what Mrs. Marchick said, Bleak. Out. Don, Joe, thank show you. him out. Thank you. All right, all right, but you'll be sorry. We'll all be sorry. You had the usual poses and corny comments from the newlyweds. That may be the real story being hustled out the door. Herbert Bleak, what a pleasant surprise. I saw what she did to you tonight. I was shocked. <laughs> you were shocked? After all you've done for her, and she repays you with insults. Ah, little Miss Sheila has certainly changed. Yes, but it isn't her fault. And who should know that better than you? You who were in love with her. I was her friend. I only wanted to help her. Of course you did. But I... I should have known him. It was too late. Too late? It's the museum's fault. They should have sent a letter when they sent a wig. I mean, as soon as... As, as soon as I got the letter... Warner. Just what's in that letter? Oh, it's, it's a story. The truth about Meg Payton's wig. The truth? Tell me about it. But Miss DeVore, I gotta help Miss DeVore. Well, all right. I'm sure that when Sheila finds out this terrible truth, she'll tell me all about it. Oh, Herbert. Mm. Uh, could you give me Sheila's new telephone number? It's unlisted and. Grandview. <laughs> Just a minute. Grandview 8. 3165. Cheers, Herbert. And thanks for everything. away here in the sky. It's simply breathtaking. Georgie. What? My glass is empty again. Oh, Georgie, it's absolutely dreamy. To think that just yesterday you were a struggling director, and now here you are on top of the world. <laughs> and rich. Rich? Mmm. Very rich. You mean for my salary from the picture? <laughs> no, silly. From your inheritance. My what? Well, it's true, isn't it? You and Max had a partnership, and the survivor inherited everything. 
Now, how did you know that? <laughs> you know, these things just sort of <laughs> pop into my head. The minute Max fell into the pool. Isn't it just marvy the way everything's turned out? Life is just full of the most pleasant surprises, my darling. <laughs> you know something? What? I have another surprise for you. Oh? Give Sheila a kiss. Gladly. get somebody who can. I'm sorry, Mr. Vaughn. It won't happen again. Get out. Herbert. Let him go. You said you didn't want to be bothered. Never mind what I said. Let him go and get out of here. I've been trying to reach you for weeks, Miss DeVore. I've got to talk to you. Well, I haven't time, Herbert. I'm giving a party on the set of my new picture. I'm rushing now. Well, well your party will have to wait. I must speak to you now. I'm alone. Go back to the set, Betty, would you please? Oh, yes, Miss DeVore. You can't go on this way, Miss DeVore. What way, Herbert? Wearing that wig. It, it carries a... Well, a curse. It, it was all in the letter. I mean, you've got to stop wearing that thing. It's changed you. Herbert, you're my friend. Would you want me to go back to the way I was? Or worse? Oh, no. So, you see, I... I have to go on wearing it. But you've already murdered two men. I mean, where will it stop? That's a very dangerous thing for you to say, Herbert. I hope you haven't repeated it to anyone. No, no, of course not. Good. Then we can go on being friends, if you wish. And you can be my personal manager. I need you, Herbert. I need someone I can trust to handle my personal affairs. But how can I forget what happened to Mr. Quink and, and Mr. Mocek? But you don't really know what happened to them, Herbert. Oh, but I can guess. Now, Herbert, the police were satisfied that their deaths were accidental, and that should end the matter. Unless, of course, you're here to prove otherwise, in which case I'd be delighted to remove my wig just for you. Oh, no, 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 please. I thought not. You know something, Herbert? After a while, this wig grows on a person. The mere idea of it is really quite, quite breathtaking, don't you agree? Just imagine being able to go on and on and on. Always being beautiful. Never growing old. I never intend to go without it. 
so we'll never mention our little secret again. Will we? No, Miss DeVore. What have we here? A budding stalwart. You know who I am? Yes, yes. But the movie counts. Oh, you're a bright girl. How'd you like to make $50? All you have to do for it is step outside the moment Mr. Vore comes in. Oh, don't worry. You won't get into trouble. All I want is a private interview with her. Well, if you say so, Mr. Vore. Sheila, darling, and what a sweet idea to reserve the entire sound stage for your crew. Well, you ought to get out in the dance floor, Arabella. We're doing the twist. Marvelous for the figure. Fine. If I could do something about the face, too. Speaking of faces, I heard a rumor about yours. Oh, really, Arabella? Well, I'd love to hear all about it sometime. Unfortunately, I don't have the time right now. I have to dash back to my party. It wasn't exactly a rumor, Sheila. These are facts, darling, documented by one of the most reputable museums in the world. And what does that letter that you stole from Herbert say, Arabella? It says that mysterious wig of yours is the product of medieval witchcraft, and that it has dark and demonic powers. <laughs> You don't believe a cock and bull story like that, do you, Arabella? Ordinarily, I wouldn't. But when you stop to consider, a frowsy old bag puts on the wig. And overnight, mind you, becomes a ravishing beauty. The head of the richest studio in town drowns accidentally. A director with the biggest smash in the country dives off his balcony and turns himself into a puddle of blood. 
Put them all together, and they spell... What, Arabella? What do they spell? I don't know. Yet. But now you want to find out. Don't you think your fans are entitled to know all about their glamour girl? You keep away from me, Arabella. There's nothing to be afraid of. That story can't possibly be true. I only want you to prove it. Take off the wig, Sheila. Now, I'm warning you. Darling, I've been around too long to be threatened by a cheap little... Off it comes, Glamour Girl! <laughs> Thank you. 